Good morning. It is Christiana Ellis and I am distracted right as I start the video. It's 10 11 a.m. on Saturday, July 25th, 2020. I am Christiana <coughs> Ellis and that's Rocket. This is five more minutes. Uh, so, <coughs> Rocket, what is going on? I don't know what he's barking at me for. We just went outside, and I he, I feel like he's acting like maybe I didn't give him his breakfast, but I'm sure that I did. Um, I did go back to bed after initially taking him out this morning. Uh, I definitely needed to sleep in a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I'm uh, <laughs> very glad to um, now be in... Uh, slightly less sleep deprived state um definitely distracted though just because i literally got a message uh about possibly playing um uh, an rpg um very soon and i got the message literally right as the video was starting so that's why i was a little bit distracted but let me talk today about two movies that i have recently rewatched. I believe they're both from the 90s. Yes, they were both from the 90s, and they're both movies that I haven't rewatched in a long time. And those two movies were Event Horizon and Schindler's List. Uh, I didn't watch them like literally as a double feature or anything, but. Um, and it wasn't there's there's no real relationship between why I watched watched them, uh, so I'm mostly just amused myself that that's the two things that I'm kind of prepared to talk about. Um, so Schindler's List, I rewatched because it's the next movie on the AFI's top 100 list. Specifically, it's number eight, pretty high up on that list. And uh, obviously, Mike and I will be talking more about it next week when we record our Watching 100 Movies episode. But it was definitely one I wasn't necessarily looking forward to rewatching because it's so heavy. And sure enough, like, there are a lot of movies where when you rewatch them for the first time in a while, you gain all sorts of, like, new insight or new understanding or anything and I, and and I didn't really with Schindler's List partly just because like I I don't want to say I got it the first time like it in a derisive way but I guess I did just sort of feel like I don't feel like I needed reminding about the message although I certainly acknowledge one it is one that should you know like I, I would hope that people don't forget. Um, I think it's obviously a very important movie to exist. And honestly, there's more, like, it's much more engaging and watchable than you might think if you really haven't watched it in a while. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, it's... You know, it's about a very dark time in our human history, and um, I feel like, I don't want to say it's beyond criticism, because I think that's not true. I think there are aspects of it that you can kind of wonder about, but then again, some of those aspects uh, that, you know, potentially could be criticized are really sort of audience dependent, because it's a little bit like movies like The Green Book, where someone who tries to be more engaged with the current discourse on um, race and those sorts of issues is going to look at a, book, a movie like Green Book and say, like, oh, it's a little pat. It's really focused on the white guy learning to not be racist. It's kind of designed for white people today to look back and say, well, I would have been one of the good ones. I would have been one of the nice ones who wasn't mean. When I feel like 
I'm not sure that that sort of self-congratulatory message is really helpful, important. But then again, at the same time, there are audiences that wouldn't watch it any other way and wouldn't be wouldn't expose themselves to those sorts of stories at all if not for sort of that buffer so i think it's a, schindler's list is a very important movie to exist um but i didn't super enjoy rewatching it because it's so heavy um event horizon on the other hand i vaguely recall um when I saw it in the theater, I remember thinking that the premise was really interesting and that I liked a lot of it, but that it sort of just fell apart in the final act and that I found it really unsatisfying and that I had uh, often used it as a case study for the principle that in storytelling, it's easier to ask an interesting question than to provide an interesting answer. But I think, you know, looking back, my tastes in, um, uh, tastes in, uh, horror have evolved and I'm a little bit more in tune with the idea and tropes of the horror of the unexplainable, of the, the barely glimpsed, so to speak, which is definitely what it's going for with the whole premise that, oh my gosh, this faster than light drive made the ship go to hell. Um, so on that basis, I feel like the movie is a little bit more coherent than I felt like it was at uh, the first viewing. But it's also a reminder that going back to mid-90s mid era special effects is... Um, whew, there's Yeah, there's a period in there where unless you're the, the you know, the top of the line... Um, filmmaking you know some of them are dubious and stand out um like the cgi uh bubbles of liquid floating around in zero g is kind of like oh, i don't know and the sets are great but a lot of the way the movie is shot feels oddly kind of trashy but in a way that i kind of enjoyed revisiting so I guess what I'll say is the movie is not a prestige picture, but it got, I think it's got a lot of cool stuff in it, and I appreciated it, frankly, more than I did the first time. So there you have it. So I'm going to leave it there, and I will talk to you all tomorrow for five more minutes when, of course, I'll be continuing my rewatch of The Legend of Korra.